Hello there and welcome. In the previous episode, we continued working on our weapon script. We added some customization. For example, we can now change between different shooting modes. We can change the bullet velocity, the shooting delay. And these are things that we're going to change depending on the weapon that we're going to have. In this episode, we're not going to deal with the weapon script but we're going to add some effects to the shooting because a big part of these FPS games is about the satisfaction of shooting different things and getting different effects. So we're going to start by creating a bullet hole and some smoke. So before we start with these effects, we want to create the middle point that is going to be our reticle. For this, we're going to create a canvas and inside we're going to create an image we're going to name it middle point. We're going to scale it to be very small. And now you can see we have this little square, but we don't want it to be a square. We want it to be uh, some kind of dot. So inside the art folder, I imported two assets and you can find the links in the description. We have this bullet hole image and we have this knob. So we're going to use this knob for the middle point. So we're simply going to drag this knob inside the source image. And now we can see that it turned to be a small dot. Next, we're going to download a package from Unity. It's a free package that contains different visual effects. And we're going to use one of the assets inside to create our own effect. So simply go to this page. You can find the link in the description as well and download this package. It will open your package manager and then just look for this package and download it and then import it into your project. Now, after you imported this package, you're going to see this effects example folder. So we're going to go inside and we're going to look for something specific. Just type in stone and we want this bullet impact stone effect. Now, in your case, it may be pink, but that's just because we're using a URP project it's very simple to fix it, but it doesn't really matter because we're not going to use the material itself. We're going to create our own material. So don't worry about this. We're going to drag the bullet impact stone effect to our scene, and then we're going to extract it from being a prefab. So we right click on it, prefab and unpack completely. So now it stops being a prefab and we're going to make it our own prefab. Next, we expand this prefab and we delete this decal because we don't need it. Another thing that we want to remove is inside this impact debris, which is the actual smoke. We go into the particle system and we're going to disable the renderer because we don't need the extra particles that this renderer is creating. Now, also don't worry about this, but if you're really bothered by the pink color, you can simply go to universal render pipeline and lit, and then it's going to convert it into a URP material. But again, we're not using this material. Now, if we click on the prefab itself, we can find this decal destroyer, and this is simply the lifetime of the actual effect. So if you want your bullet hole to disappear after a few seconds, you can simply type the amount of seconds you want. I'm going to increase it to hundred seconds because I want it to stay for a very long time. I want to see many bullet holes. I don't want the bullet holes to just disappear after five seconds, but you can play around with these values. Now inside the bullet prefab, we're going to create a quad and we're going to name it bullet hole. So this will be our bullet hole. We're going to remove the mesh collider and then inside the materials folder, we're going to create a new material and we're going to name it stone bullet hole. Of course, make sure that the shader is a URP shader, but it should be this way if you created the project as a URP project. Then we're going to go back into the art and we're going to drag this hole into the base map. Now we're going to change a few settings over here and that's important if you want it to look good. So we're going to change it to specular, transparent, and we're going to render both faces. And now we see this specular map option. So we're going to drag this sprite once again to this spot. Now, if you don't see a transparent background to your sprite, simply click on it and you need to select it to be a sprite and also alpha is transparency and then simply press on apply. Now we're simply going to drag this material that we created 
onto our bullet hole. We're going to change the offset a bit and that's just something very specific to the bullet sprite that I imported. Now we're going to select this bullet hole and we're going to scale it to be very small because we want the hole to be the size of a real bullet. Then we're also going to set the Z position to a very small value like 0.001 and that will just solve a problem with the actual prefab flickering because it will be instantiated on the same face as the target. So we don't want this to happen. Next, inside the prefabs folder, we're going to create another folder and we're going to name it effects. Then we're going to drag the bullet impact stone effect that we created into this folder. So now it became our own prefab and we can delete it from the scene. Now we want to do some adjustments inside the bullet script. So we're going to have a method that will actually make this effect visible. So we're going to name it create bullet impact effect and when we actually hit a target, we're going to run and call this method. Now, this method should receive the actual collider, the thing that we're colliding with. So if we collide with a wall, we want to pass in the wall. If we collide with a target, we want to pass in the target. And that's just because we want to get the exact position we should instantiate our effect on. So we're going to take this collision and pass it inside this method. And we're going to do the same thing with the wall. Now we're going to add these parameters and we can see that we have this parameter over here. Now, in order to not be confused, we can rename it to something like object we hit because this will basically be the object that we hit. And we can rename all of these collisions to the same thing. Inside this method, we're going to have a contact point, and this is basically just the first point that our bullet will hit, because we want to instantiate this effect on the first spot that our bullet is hitting. So we simply get it by using this object we hit, dot contacts, and we're going to get the first index, which is zero. Then we're going to instantiate the actual hole, which is this prefab, this effect prefab. And after we instantiate it, we're going to make the thing that we hit a parent of this hole, because we want this hole to be a child inside of this parent. So we're simply going to pass in the transform of the thing that we hit. And now we need to take care of this instantiate. So we need to pass in the actual prefab, the effect prefab. So in order to do that, we cannot have a reference inside this bullet itself because the bullet itself is something that is getting instantiated by itself. So it's not going to work. That's why we need some kind of global reference. So we're going to create an empty object and name it global references. It will be a singleton that will hold different references that we want to reference from different places. Then we're going to create a script with the same name. Inside this global references, we are going to make it into a singleton. So this is a standard way of creating a singleton. We're simply saying that it's a type of instance. And then we check that this instance is not null and it's not this instance, because if it is, we need to destroy the new created instance because we only want to have one instance of this global references all of the time. And if it's not this instance, then it means that this is the instance, okay? If you don't know this pattern, so just know that this is the usual way we create a singleton. And now we are going to be able to reference this script from anywhere inside our project. So we're going to have this prefab over here. So we're going to have a game object with this bullet impact effect prefab. And now we can simply go to the global references instance and reference this bullet impact effect prefab. So this is the thing that we want to instantiate. And then we need to supply it with the position we want to instantiate it at. So it will be this contact point. And we also need to provide it with a rotation. So we're going to say quaternion look rotation contact normal. And this is just the rotation that we hit the actual target. And now we're going to instantiate this effect prefab on this exact point that we hit. Now we're going to save and we're going to drag this global references to the global references object. And we can see that we need a reference to the prefab. So we go into our prefabs 
effects and we're going to drag this bullet impact prefab inside of the reference. Now, at some point, you may have an error, something related to post-processing. I don't know why it comes up, but it happened to me a few times. To fix this, all you need to do is go to your package manager, go to the Unity registry and find the post-processing and then just update this package. And this will solve your problem. I don't know if it will even come up, but if it does, just do it. Now, before we test the actual effect, I'm going to do a few changes. First of all, I don't like this red color, so I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to give it a gray color and I'm going to set it to all of these plates. Next, I'm going to change a few things inside the weapon script. So I want to make the shooting delay between each bullet very, very small because we don't want to wait two seconds between each shot. And we are also going to increase the bullet velocity to something like 500 because that's more realistic. And another thing we want to do is remove the trail renderer from our bullet prefab because it was just for testing and we don't really need it. It doesn't look good. And we can also change the shooting mode to automatic because why not? So now we're going to run the game. And if I shoot any of these targets, we're going to see this bullet hole. We can see some smoke and it doesn't look the way it should be. So we're going to fix this, but we can see that these plates are falling way too easily. So it means that we need to increase the mass of these plates. And that's just because we also increased the bullet velocity. So because the bullet velocity is higher, then there is more power to the bullet. And it means that these plates are not really strong like they used to be before. So we're going to select all of these targets and we're going to increase the mass to something like 70. And then inside the bullet impact prefab, we are going to do a small change in the material. We're simply going to decrease the smoothness to about zero. And now it should look better. So now if we run the game again, we can shoot and these plates will fall like they really have some weight to them and we can shoot them. And I think it looks pretty nice, pretty satisfying. I can shoot automatically. And when we're going to add some sounds to it and some recoil, it will really feel much better. Now, I also want to talk about the spread intensity that we created in the previous episode. If I point at one point and I shoot, it will always shoot to this exact point because our spread intensity is set to zero. But if I'm going to increase it to something like 0.1 and I'm going to shoot at one point, you can see that there is this spread. So each time we get a random position inside of this spread radius. Now, if I'm going to exaggerate and put something like one, we can see that the spread will be very, very big. So this will be more suitable for a shotgun or maybe some kind of minigun, but it's harder to hit small targets this way. And it means that in the future, we can have attachments to our weapons that are going to improve this spread. We can start with a very high spread, and then when we add some kind of foregrip, then the spread will go down and we can play with all of these settings in the future. So that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. It will help me a lot. Also leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you next time.